So while all the wife and kids are in the kitchen, I'm going to stay out and um, have a little look at two different motors and see if we can make these work. I've trashed a um, CD-ROM which of course has the uh, little three-phase stator motor in it to drive the um, CDs and also has the slimline stepper motor that um, opens and shuts the door and does all the rest of the stuff. This one here only has five wires coming out of it so what I'm going to do is open it up and see what's inside this little slimline motor. So we'll get this one up and going first if we can and then we'll look at uh, getting this three phase one up and running because I think this will be a uh, nice little motor for some projects. So uh, first we'll open this one and see how we go with that and we'll have a look inside. Okay, we were going to give this stepper motor a uh, run first, see if we could make it work, but we're not going to, and there's a reason for that, and that is because inside this casing here, which I have had off, um, there is something that I haven't seen before. I can understand how it works, but I've never came across um, a motor like this. So we're actually going to leave this one for a separate project altogether and uh, I just wonder how many of you can work out what's actually under this um, steel casing or housing. So of course in the middle there we have the rotor uh, but it's actually the stator arrangement that is uh, very odd. And like I said I've, <coughs> excuse me, I've never seen one like it before so um, a very interesting way of setting one of these up <coughs> so we'll be looking at that as a uh, separate project but not now now just uh, for you, those of you that have old CD-ROMs lying around um, just keep your uh, eyes out for one of these stepper motors because yeah inside that is a very unique arrangement Okay, so we've pulled the stator motor apart that was on the or inside the um, CD-ROM and of course this is what actually drove the CD itself. Now it was wired up in the star configuration and I've simply separated the three windings or the three coils that were twisted together and soldered and of course the other three were the three input wires for our three phase motor and we've separated them into six uh, different wires which will now give us three coil sets uh, so the plan here would be to put two coil sets in series and have the last coil set driving the transistor or used to fire up the transistor all I've done here is just use some IDE cable very flat because there's not a lot of room to work with underneath the flywheel and I've just used the steel backing plate that it was mounted to I've separated that from the circuit board and uh, bolted everything back with that in place so this also gives us a, a nice little base here to fix to our wooden board so as to hold it steady so that's all wired up. All we've got to do now is go ahead and work out all our uh, coils here. Which once again we'll have three separate coils now. So just use your multimeter set on ohms to find out which are coil pairs. And I'm simply going to select the one coil pair to drive the transistor and the other two, like I said, hooked in series to run the motor itself or as the power coils. And of course we have our uh, rotor with the ring magnet in it. Now these are just these strip magnets and uh, north-south, north-south configuration coincide with the stator coils and there's a lot of them so it should be a nice little run of this motor. Once we get it all back together, simply 
it on there like that. Put the screws back in and uh, wire it up and away we go. So we'll uh, go ahead and do that and um, see if it actually works. But uh, yeah, this little motor here, this is a very interesting setup underneath this cover. And um, we will be looking at that in detail uh, in another video. Alright, so uh, we're going to do some soldering and we'll be back. Okay, so we're all sorted out with the wiring. A little bit of trial and error, but um, I'm sure you will be able to work it out. Basically what we're doing is positive in to one coil set, coming out back in to another coil set, which of course must be start or end to end. Um, as we have a north-south configuration on the um, rotor magnet and then we come out of the second coil to the collector of the transistor so it's basically set up, well it is set up like the um, SSG circuit however we don't have our diode across the base emitter junction on the transistor and in this setup I'm coming off of the 1N4007 which is off the collector um, and we're going through this LED we're then coming out of that LED and going into the positive side of the charge battery this of course being our run battery now the reason I put LEDs in line um, with our diode from the collector is that it allows you to go straight back to the source battery if you so choose to do so Okay, so this is a voltage on our run battery, this is a voltage on our charge battery. Um, like we all know, voltages mean nothing. It's the actual capacity within the battery. You can have voltage without having any capacity. Or not very much, so don't ever be fooled by voltage in batteries. Um, okay, so we don't have a amp meter on the circuit at the moment. I'm not really interested in that, we just want to see how this little motor spools up and how it uh, sounds and operates. So uh, give her a little flip and the way she goes it runs very nice. The LED is running, the charge battery has gone up and our run battery has gone down as we would expect. Okay, so having the LED in uh, series with our diode on the collector, or our output diode, we can simply take our LED wire off, of course our light goes out, our neon comes on, and we can go straight back to the positive of the run battery, LED of course is a little brighter now but um, everything is still running fine so what you're actually doing now is you're pulling current from the run battery to run the system and your inductive kickback is lighting the LED and sending some charge back to our source battery so um, the LEDs work really good for returning the output back to the source and uh, you will know that if you try this without an LED you run into all sorts of problems so um, we'll actually do that we'll sacrifice the transistor may may not blow I don't know but we'll come straight off the die go back to the source hear that motor dies So, you need that LED. Whoop. And then we can go straight back to the source battery. So, um, <coughs> this motor's worked out quite nice. Quite nice indeed. We might just um, go back to our charge battery. 
The motor picks up speed a little bit. And now uh, might go a little duller, but uh, of course we are still charging the battery. So a nice little circuit. Runs very smooth, very sweet little motor. Certainly does have some torque there. Not a lot, but uh, much better than your standard pulse motor. And very easy to start. So that's a very nice little motor, that one. Quite happy with that. And, uh, like I said, next we're going to have a look at this magic little thing and I'll show you what's under here. Which is a uh, new one on me, but um, I guess uh, no matter how long you uh, muck around with these things, you never ever end up seeing everything that's out there. So uh, this will be an interesting one, this one. This will be a challenge. Alright guys, until then, um, enjoy, have fun. And um, I'm sure most of you have got an old CD-ROM laying around somewhere. And hopefully it'll be one of these uh, tiny little, or well, not small, but narrow stator motors because um, very nice little setup. Alright, cheers guys.